Biscayne National Park was established in the 1960s by a small group of dedicated citizen activists who were very concerned because this whole area was slated for extensive development and they felt that the land and waters were very, very special and needed to be protected as a national park. In the park you can find hundreds of different species of fish and over 200 species of birds. It includes the northernmost extent of the Florida Keys, so we have over 40 islands in the park. Because we are a water park, it really adds to the visitor experience to see large numbers and diverse species of water birds. And these nesting bird colonies are the source of these birds. These water birds, because they're at the top of the food chain, are pretty much like the canary in the coal mine. And if their population starts to dip down, we'll know that there's a problem in the ecosystem. Our office is charged with monitoring vital signs. Within Biscayne National Park, colonial birds were one of those vital signs. The primary colonial nesting bird in Biscayne is the double-crested cormorant. We also have great blue herons, a color morph, the great white heron, as well as great egrets, some white ibis, and little blue herons as well. So we looked at a variety of ways to do the monitoring and we found that the helicopter was the best way for us. So we have a wildlife biologist within the helicopter who's using a telephoto lens to take photographs. They approach the island with a very specific pattern and get a complete series of photographs that we can analyze. It can be a bit of a disturbance for the birds, but it's very short. We're there for minutes, if not seconds. We use a helicopter for a few reasons. One, it's one of the most accurate ways we can get to uh, see the most birds. We very much consider the, the birds and try and be as least disruptive as possible, but we stay long enough for us to get the shots and move slowly across the area. During a monthly survey, we normally take approximately 300 photographs. And these photographs become the actual data. From the photos is what we translate onto our data sheets, the count that we will use to compare year to year and month to month. A one hour helicopter ride turns into about 40 hours of work. Between the processing, printing, and analyzing and counting. I mean, it's, there's the bird, the yep. great blue heron. Yep, good call. There you go. It takes hours of going through the photographs, circling the nest, and then doing the counts, just hours of uh, processing of the data. We'll circle a nest, if it's an active nest, we'll circle it with an appropriate color. Yellow indicates an adult bird on a nest. Uh, magenta indicates chicks are present at the nest, and the cyan color indicates the nest has eggs in it. In addition to the helicopter flights once a year, we'll do a boat survey. And this boat survey allows us to do a truthing where we pick a segment of an island and we take additional photos from a boat level so we get a little bit more information and it allows us to verify helicopter photos. Our office began monitoring in 2009. We've made a consistent effort to do surveys since then because we realized how valuable this data set will be long term. The only thing we knew about it coming in was a study from the 1970s there's been a long gap where we didn't have any information at all. So we're starting that legacy of a long-term data set. We've identified peak nesting trends for every bird that we monitor. So there's a lot of valuable data that we've collected over the time. One of the birds that we noticed within the park that hadn't been seen before was the roseate spoonbill, which has now been nesting for several years. We think the roseate spoonbills moving into the park is good news. It shows that the park system, the ecosystem in the park can support roseate spoonbills in, a, in addition to what's already there. The park is thrilled to see the roseate spoonbill added as a new colonial nesting bird. We have dedicated staff in the inventory and monitoring networks that does science that the parks may not have the resources to do. Other vital signs that we monitor in our network include marine fish, coral reef health, exotic species, and water quality. We feel it's important to spend our time and energy monitoring these birds within Biscayne so that we can do our job of preserving these for future generations. If we can spot a trend that's a problem, we might be able to do something about it. Our network, the South Florida and Caribbean Inventory and Monitoring Network, we take our programs very seriously. All the inventory and monitoring that we do, the wildlife itself and the parks benefit from it the visitors benefit, and also uh, the science is very important. We think it's a very important mission.